the EV market now has three fairly interesting options for pickup trucks. It began with the Rivian R1T, which has an insane amount of character, lots of practicality, an amazing suspension system, pretty decent range, and that new startup company vibe that is just so much fun to experience. Then GM entered the picture with the most ironic electric vehicle of all time, the Hummer, which is intentionally brutal and big and inefficient with these giant battery packs, crazy off-roading features, crab walk capability, Ability, a huge emphasis on lunar landings, and has brought back a brand that no one was really asking for. But I think what's far more important is the F-150 Lightning launch, which did happen today. The most popular sold vehicle in the United States for the past 40 years is now making that transition to electric. And the first F-150 Lightning deliveries are supposed to take place over the next couple weeks. And the value is really, really good there. And you may not get necessarily the best range or efficiency with the F-150 Lightning, but it is going to be a classic work truck that fits very, very well into the incredibly large Ford fan base of pickup truck buyers. And because of all these electric pickup trucks coming out, and some that haven't even launched yet, like the Silverado EV, there's been a lot of talk about, well, the Cybertruck is dead, right? Because there's so many great electric pickup trucks to choose from. Why would anybody wait around for the Cybertruck at this point? And I have to take partial responsibility because I've provided you guys with updated expectations on the Cybertruck saying, guys, based on the pricing of the Model Y right now, I don't think the Cybertruck is going to be affordable. I don't think it's going to be anywhere close to the pricing they said at unveiling. And because of how slow the ramp up for 4680 batteries is, I also don't even think they're going to start with a 500 or even 400 mile range Cybertruck. I'm predicting for it to be a little bit over 300 miles, just like the Rivian and the F-150 Lightning and the Hummer max out at, at least with their current production. They're not building longer range options yet. And I've seen a lot of comments saying, well, if this happens, then everyone's going to cancel their order. No one's going to want to buy a Cybertruck when all these other electric trucks have already launched. Today's video is breaking down and explaining five main reasons that the Cybertruck, even with lower range, even with really high pricing, is still going to be worth the wait and it's going to have a lot of advantages over its competition. And I also just don't want you guys to forget that I'm still a huge fan of the Cybertruck design and features, even with my realistic expectations expectations of the range being over 300 miles, but that's it, and the price being absurdly high. They can still justify that because of these five advantages that I'm diving into today. The main one is honestly the same reason most people buy Teslas today. The Cybertruck will be the first electric truck capable of the supercharging network. This is probably the weakest point of going with the Rivian F-150 Lightning or even Hummer right now. Both the Rivian and the Lightning are pretty limited in their max charging speed. Like, if you're lucky lucky enough to find an Electrify America station that can support the 500 amps that the Rivian supports, you're maybe getting around to 17 kilowatts, whereas Teslas today, with much smaller battery packs, can handle 250 kilowatts. And because the Cybertruck is reported to use this new 800 volt architecture with the 4680 batteries, which should enable a better charging curve, it's very likely that the Cybertruck will be able to sustain closer to 350 kilowatts of charge speed. And and the rates at superchargers are substantially lower than they are at Electrify America stations. Not to mention there are vastly more superchargers out there than there are EA stations. And Tesla has mentioned that they want to open up superchargers for non-Teslas in the future, but in the United States at least, which is where all these electric trucks are launching, it's going to be a very, very slow rollout because from what we've gathered, Tesla wants to start installing superchargers that have both the Tesla connector and the CCS connector. And pretty much all superchargers right now don't rock CCS. So it's going to be a very, very long time before you can take your Rivian or your Hummer or your F-150 Lightning to the largest charge network in America. So just having that flexibility of charging and knowing there's going to be a higher likelihood of charge stations available wherever you drive instantly gives the Cybertruck a huge advantage on its competitors, as does the overall charging time and the fact that it's plug and charge. Very simple. You just plug in, it starts charging, case closed. You don't have to fuss around with the EA station too much. But okay, EA stations could grow a lot in the next couple years, and hopefully Ford can enable faster charging on the Electrify America over time, but we don't know yet. Let's talk about the vehicle itself instead of the infrastructure that supports it. Another huge advantage of the Cybertruck that people are going to be willing to wait for is the durability argument. All of these electric trucks that are coming out are still shipping with a lot of aluminum body panels covered in fragile paint that especially when you're 
taking it off road or driving it through the dirt or doing donuts in gravel all of that stuff is going to age fairly poorly or rust depending on the climate you're in and also just rock chips as well as driving off road and driving near branches and trees the exterior of these trucks is pretty much going to age just as badly as every other truck which means dents from people opening their doors into your vehicle or rocks or scratches are going to damage the exterior of the truck and depreciate the value quite a bit just like every other truck on the road can take damage but the cyber truck is in a whole new class of its own by completely redesigning the way the truck is built from the ground up so not only do you have absolutely no paint on the outside of the truck to worry about but the actual mass of the truck has been pushed to the outside and because of that exoskeleton it's going to be substantially harder for you to get any dents and rock chips or scratches are really going to be a thing of the past not to mention just the aesthetic of the cyber truck even if it does get little scratches or scuffs within the steel it kind of goes along with the post-apocalyptic look of that truck it will still look like a cyber truck even if it collects scratches or scuffs here and there because it just goes along with the stainless steel and if there's any people out there that have worked with stainless steel on vehicles before you know it's going to be a lot easier to just kind of buff that out you don't have to worry about paint matching different panels like you do with current pickup truck maintenance and trying to get the color exactly right to match what the rest of the truck looks like is going to be a lot harder whereas with the cyber truck it's all just a giant steel beast that won't rust in the winter weather climates not even to mention the tesla armored glass they're planning to implement on the cyber truck which will mean this is far more durable than any other glass in any other electric truck right now the third giant advantage the cyber truck has going for it has to be tesla's efficiency the rivian as fun as it is and as much as i love checking it out happened to have the worst efficiency of any electric vehicle out there which i guess is to be expected it's a pickup truck but then the f-150 lightning efficiency is even worse than that and of course the electric hummer doesn't even get an epa report because it's over 9,000 pounds and it is absolutely the least efficient electric vehicle of all time but the cyber truck i actually think is going to undercut all other electric trucks on weight this was mentioned during the announcement but also just makes a ton of sense if you consider that the exoskeleton is going to be holding most of the mass of the truck together it's not a traditional body on frame design and tesla is going to be using their brand new structural battery pack technology on the cyber truck which means the 4680 cells are actually going to help hold the vehicle together that way you don't have to drop all of your batteries into a module drop those modules into a pack and then set that pack inside a big inefficient heavy body on frame design which is what all these other electric trucks are doing and that's why you find out the rivian is over 7,000 pounds and the hummer's over 9,000 pounds i still think the cyber truck will be heavy probably around 6,000, but substantially lighter than all the other electric trucks which should matter in regards to efficiency the other big advantage of the cyber truck's design is it's inherently more aerodynamic than all these other electric trucks because the tonneau cover is standard and it has that sloping design off the back which makes the cyber truck closer to that ideal aptera teardrop shape that you want evs to be in to achieve the best aerodynamic efficiency having that sloped bed design also allows you to store more in the vault in the back while still keeping it protected and keeping the aerodynamics of the truck incredibly good which does play a substantial role in how good your range is i think the fact that ford has a open back on the f-150 lightning and tried to keep the design as similar as possible to other f-150s while probably helped with affordability because they got to reuse a bunch of other f-150 parts is costing them a lot in efficiency because they are putting giant battery packs in these trucks and the range is frankly just not very good in the first place so because of the lighter weight of the cyber truck and the improved aerodynamics i expect that they won't need as large a battery pack as the competitors do in order to go the same distance which also means your charging speed is improved because you don't have to charge as long to get as many miles as the other guys do back into the battery efficiency definitely still matters in evs i think there's too many people that are convinced well because i'm not paying for gas that means it must be cheaper but in reality a lot of you may be replacing gas bills with electron bills and especially with the higher pricing of the electrify america network if you buy a inefficient truck and you charge it with a overpriced charging network that's going to cost you probably twice as much as buying an efficient pickup truck that has better rates on its supercharging times that means that even if the f-150 lightning is substantially cheaper than the cyber truck over time the cyber truck might end up being more affordable because of how much you pay in charging for your f-150 lightning so another good reason to wait for 
for the Cybertruck. The fourth reason is I think another huge advantage that all Teslas have over competitors right now, and you can't exactly write it off when Tesla is capturing 75% market share in the United States. Number four is software and autonomous driving features. Tesla gets over the air updates better than anybody. And while I've been fairly impressed with the Rivian software, it's still trying its best to catch up to where Tesla is in terms of features when it comes to theater mode and car wash mode and apps that come out every year. Not to mention the emphasis Tesla puts into their self-driving systems by having cameras all over the vehicle, which the Cybertruck is rumored to have higher resolution cameras as well as hardware 4.0, so an improved version of the Tesla custom design full self-driving computer. This is going to perform autonomous driving features far better than all the other guys. Ford is still struggling to get Blue Cruise to handle normal turns on the freeway, and Rivian is relying on pre-mapped highways, which means their driver plus features don't work everywhere you go, whereas the Cybertruck is going to come standard with autopilot, just like any Tesla, which you can use on any road. And by the time the Cybertruck ships, there's a good chance that the FSD beta will be available for everybody to use. I'm not saying robo taxis will be ready or will be at level three autonomous driving yet, but you will be able to get in the car, tell it where you want to go, and have a greater than 0% chance of the truck being able to navigate roundabouts, intersections, and handle highway driving all autonomously and just get you to your destination. And then when you're done shopping or watching a movie at the theater, you can come out, sub in the Cybertruck, it'll back out of its space and come and get you. That's not something we're expecting to see from any of these other electric truck options out there. I know there's a lot of pickup truck owners that don't care about that kind of thing, but there absolutely are some that do. And of course, I think it's an assortment of reasons as to why Tesla outsells every other EV in the US and the software and the autonomy features Tesla has going for them and how simple they are to understand and how well they perform compared to competitors is likely why Tesla has captured a large chunk of the market. And I expect that to be somewhat of a factor even with the Cybertruck. And the fifth reason that I also see a lot of people forgetting about with the Cybertruck is performance. Right now, the fastest electric truck on the market is the Rivian R1T, which is absurdly quick. With their quad motor powertrain, they're able to get zero to 60 times in about three seconds. That's faster than the Model 3 performance, mind you, which is insane considering it's a whole truck. But when they unveiled the Cybertruck with the tri-motor system, they were expecting to do zero to 60 in under 2.9 seconds. And now they've made the switch to the quad motor. Not to mention the Cybertruck is likely going to be lighter than the Rivian R1T. And come on, Tesla is already manufacturing at scale the Plaid powertrain for the Model S and X, which is getting zero to 60 times in the low two seconds, sometimes less. So knowing they're going to put four motors on a Cybertruck means that it will likely be able to accelerate faster than any other electric truck off the line. And Tesla, of course, usually puts a big emphasis into their performance and their handling. And I expect them to not treat the Cybertruck any different. So that's another huge advantage that I could see a lot of people appreciating that the Cybertruck has going for it over all of the other electric pickup truck options out there. And of course, there's more that I could keep on going on about, like towing capacity, payload capacity, Tesla insurance being substantially lower than all of its competitors. So car insurance for pickup truck drivers is typically a lot higher and a lot worse, whereas Tesla is launching insurance in more and more states covering millions of customers. That's going to be another big cost advantage over all the other electric trucks. But if there's more reasons to wait for the Cybertruck or as to why there's people out there that are saying, yep, even with a 300 mile range and even at a hundred thousand dollars, I would still take the Cybertruck over all the other guys. Whatever those reasons are, let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below because I think there's way too many that seem to forget. The Cybertruck has a bunch of unique advantages that set it aside from the competitors, which absolutely can justify the higher price even if the range isn't that good. Or the bed isn't as big as they had hoped, but still, there's a decent chance when Cybertruck reaches the market, it'll have a six and a half foot bed, which basically none of the other guys are offering. All that good stuff, let me know what you're thinking down below. Thank you to everyone on Patreon supporting the channel. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So take care. Have a great day.